Hello everyone, this is the Mining Geologist and I'm back again with another very exciting and very informative tutorial. This year it's been all about Python and creating tools using Python, automating things using Python, and I think I'm going to continue that direction at least for the next couple of months. So in the past a uh, few tutorials we've seen how you can use PyQGIS, which is the combination of the scripting language Python and QGIS to automate things in QGIS or to create tool. One example is the last tutorial in which we've seen how you can create a simple pit designer in QGIS. That's, well, that one will take you like just a couple of minutes if you know how to use Python and if you followed the previous two tutorials. Now then I thought, why don't I create a tool that is outside of QGIS and it's going to be like a simple web application that anyone can use it to get a piece of information, like a very fast information. And maybe you have like um, a pit base and you want to try different design criteria and without like going and opening QGIS and running a script from the script editor and things like that. And that's really possible. So I started with something simple and like a toy it's going to be, but I've ended up with two tools. One of, the, one of them is really simple, but the other one is useful. And I'm sure that a lot of you are going to like it. So if you want to see what are these tools, stick around and watch the full video. Okay, so as you can see, I'm in QGIS now, and what I have here is I have like four polygons, and it's really important that they are polygons, and just keep that in your mind. The tools that I'm going to show you works only with polygons. So I have like a simple pit one and a simple pit two, and I have waste damp one and waste damp two. These are basically, you can think of these as the the pits here, the pit polygons are maybe the base of a pit design that I want to see if I apply different design criteria to these uh, designs, how are they going to look like? Okay, so the first tool is basically going to be just like a visualization tool and it's going to give you an idea how the pit looks like. And uh, it might be useful for some of you, but for me, it was like a toy. It was like something to get me started. But the second one is really useful. And I'm sure that a lot of you are going to use that in the upcoming days and months. So let's go and take a look at the first tool here that we have to cover. So the first thing that I need to do is to export these layers or these polygons to um, the geo package. Why did I choose geo package, not a shape file? Because if you're familiar with GIS tools and with the shape file format, you will know that shape files are not just one file. So you'll have like four different files. And it's not good to create an application in which you'll need to like import four files to deal with just one information, which is the pit base. So it was better for me to make it handle geo packages instead of shape files because in a geo package format you'll have like all the different informations but in just a single file so that's the idea okay so let's go and jump into the tool and show you how it works so so i've got these i've exported these to geo packages and let's go now to the first tool so if you head over to simplepitdesigner.streamlit.app, basically now this is hosted in the uh, community um, cloud from Streamlit, so it's free. Uh, I don't expect this, so if there's like hundreds of you are going to test this out, maybe it's uh, not going to work. So uh, if this one is not working, please go and visit the link later. So I'll leave the links to all of the tools that I'm going to cover today in the description below. So make sure to check that out. So uh, as you can see, what I have here is basically number of benches, bench height, bench width, and bench slope. These are the things that we use for the design. Of course, I'm not going to create uh, a tool with 
ramp design and with different uh, geotechnical constraints. You can go and create that, but that's going to take me a lot of time. I just wanted to show you here that this is possible and trust me, this didn't take like hours to create. This was like a few minutes to be fair. And uh, by few minutes, I don't mean like two or three minutes, but you can create something like this if you uh, really want to do so. So let's go and take a look at this one. So I'm going to take the uh, simple pit one, for example, and I'm going to uh, drop it in here. So basically, you can go and browse the different files also in your system if you want so. And right away, since I have three benches, you can see that I have that first polygon, which is this this one here. I have it, but with benches applied to it. So you can see that I have different benches here, and that's really cool. And one thing that you will notice is that uh, if you use this tool, if you have like um, the the coordinate system of your polygon is let's say in uh, WGS 84 and when you load this one you'll see like a different coordinate system that's because that all of the polygons that you're going to import this uh, to this um, uh, tool here are going to be reprojected to a different system which is um, this system here it's the um, it's a serial mercator, I think. So that way, because you know, uh, if you have like multiple um, coordinate systems, uh, they're all going to be uh, reprojected to the same system. That way, you can compare like apples with apples. So let's go to this tool again, and I can increase the number of benches to maybe four. And you can see that I would have four benches here and it, it's pretty fast. I'm not sure if, uh, you know, a thousand people are going to be using this one, how fast it is going to be. But for me now, it's really it's really fast and you can see that it's working uh, perfectly. Now I can go also and change the bench height. So 11 is not going to be a big difference here, but let's make this maybe 30 just to test it out to see that it changes in here. And you can see that we have a 30 uh, meter uh, bench height. Let's go and change the slope to maybe, I don't know, like 15. We'll check that it's pretty flat and it's working. Okay, you can see that it is pretty flat. Let's make this maybe 60. And you can see that it's working. Maybe the bench width, I'm going to make this also 30. You can go and play around with this tool, and this is basically to uh, show you what is possible. And if you're interested, uh, if you want to know how to create something like this, I also have this form in here. You can go, do you want to learn how to create this tool? You can go and submit your email and your name, and I will notify you when something is out that is related to creating this tool step by step, because I'm planning to create such a content. So because I know that not everyone is interested in a step by step, a full like uh, course, maybe that covers how to create these tools uh, uh, from scratch and cover the basics of Python, maybe. So only the people who are interested are going to be notified. So now let's jump to the second uh, tool. And uh, basically, you can see that we have a another damp here, which is uh, a waste stamp. This is a waste stamp outline. And maybe what we want to do, like we've seen in uh, previous tutorials, like with Micromind, for example, there's the waste stamp modeler. And why is that one helpful? It's because maybe you have an area of interest and you want to see what is the volume that can fit in that area with some design criteria, or maybe what is the elevation that you could uh, that you can reach in that area uh, if you fill it all and of course if you're you have like um, a minimum working area for the top crest so this tool is going to help you do that and I'm going to show you how you can do it so if I go to the next tool so you'll see a lot of tools in here and a lot of options so the first thing is if you guys remember this and if you've been following the channel and you, we've done this in the past and this part 
2 here, which uh, in which we've created an application that will download DEMs automatically. So uh, we're doing the same thing here. So basically, you choose uh, the southbound, the northbound, the westbound, the eastbound. Now, make sure that you don't flip the coordinates. Make sure that the southbound is uh, the point to the south, which means that it should be lower than the, the northbound. Uh, the same thing for the west should be lower than the east and so on, so that the coordinates are not flipped and you don't get an error. So if you got an error, you know what's the error. And basically, we choose an area anywhere on the planet Earth. And the good news is that by one click of a button, you're going to import the topography of that what the, of that area. And then guess what? We're going to use that topography to design the waste stamp. So if you have a waste stamp, you just need to know the extent or the coordinates in latitude, longitude. And you put that in here. And we're going to use the Open Topography API. We've already covered that. Go and check the tutorial for that one to uh, import the topography and use it. But instead of saving that to our system, now we're going to use that in a different way. So take a look at this. So we have this area of interest. And what we can do also, we can go to here. Maybe you are interested in this first waste dam. And I'm going to go and drag it here. Or you can go to Browse Files and import it. Now, then I have this uh, number of benches. I'm going to say maybe 10 just to get started with that. And press Enter. And then I have like uh, the bench height is going to be 10. Uh, the bench width is 3 and a bench slope of 45. And you can see also that, that I have the color scale. It's set to Earth. Now, the same thing with this one. If you're interested in creating this tool, you can go and submit your email here, and it will notify you when something is out. So let me go and click on Show 3D Terrain. And we're going to wait a little bit. Make sure that you don't click inside of this one while it is running, because it's creating something and might crush your browser. So wait just a few uh, seconds. Now, one thing that we will notice, or actually two things, that we have a new expander tab in here that shows 3D terrain. So we have, we have access to a new information. And also, we have a cool thing here, which is download geo package. Yes, you guessed it right. You can download the design. So let's take a look at the design now. So now, not only we have the topography and it's in 3D, it might look flat. That's because it's um, the vertical exaggeration uh, option here is set to 1. But also, we have the design. And you can see that we have the design here. Maybe in this area, we can go and and another thing that you'll notice, it's the polygon in black here. It was draped automatically on the topography. Even though that the polygon that we've created was flat with zero elevation, now this tool is going to drape that on the topography that was created automatically. And I can go now, the number of benches set this to maybe 20, and then click on uh, Show 3D Terrain. And this is going to uh, modify that design for me. And you can see that the download button disappeared. Now it's there, which means I can download the design. But let's wait a second. And now we can see that we are going to a higher elevation. You can also go and play around with the bench height, with the bench width, and with a slope angle. We can also, if you are interested in maybe taking a screenshot, maybe you like this view here, let's go and change this one to something else like electric. And uh, also, let's set the vertical exaggeration to 10, even though that this one will make the design a little bit funny, but maybe you want to see that. So let's go and click on Show 3D Terrain and wait a few seconds. I'm sure a lot of you are going to love this, and it's going to save you guys some time. But the the main idea here is not to use this tool. I know it's not like a perfect one, or it's not like uh, uh, you know, it's not like uh, something that great, or it's going to solve all of your problems. But the main idea here is this is what you can do, what you can do with a a little bit of time and 
a little bit of knowledge in Python. You don't have to be an expert to create something like this, trust me. So you can see that I've applied a vertical exaggeration of 10. Now we can see the topography clearly and we've changed the color to electric here. Maybe you like this one. And maybe you're happy with this one. Maybe you're happy with the design in here. And guess what? You can go and download that design. So I'm going to design that temp, uh, download that temp design. It's downloaded. And now I can go to that folder and it's right here. Let me go and drop that into QGIS. And let me hide all of these. And you can see this is the damp number one that we've designed. And you can see that it is not only that we have the design there, but it is clipped in 3D by the polygon that we've created. So if I zoom in closely here, you'll notice that the first uh, polyline here is basically in 3D clipping all of the other ones, all of the other benches that are below uh, this uh, this limit here or this boundary. And the good th news is that all of these are 3D polygons, I mean polylines, which means that you can go use your favorite interpolation script to interpolate this one. You can export them and check the box, export Z coordinates and use this in your favorite uh, mining package. Or maybe you want to take a look at this in 3D in QGIS and you can see that the design is in 3D. And I'm sure that a lot of you are going to enjoy using this one and the good news it's really simple and really fast you don't have to install anything and it's available there for free so one thing is uh really here i'm asking for is to subscribe hit the like button and watch my videos and share it with anyone who might be interested i hope this tutorial was informative for you guys and uh with that being said see you in the next video He's the mining geologist here to show you all the things that you might have missed. He's got plenty of software tips and tricks for your geoscience lives. So get your fix of mineral exploration and mining engineering information. And check the links, leave.